It's all his fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. So I'm going to go start the webinar and then start live streaming. And then we can wait maybe 20 seconds for people to drop, to show, show up, you know, and then you can take it from there. Okie dokie. All right. So going live. All right, everyone. Good evening from where I am in Sri Lanka. It's probably good morning for many of you. My name is Raji Jayasinghe, and I'm happy to be hosting uh, this call today. Um, our main guest, our main presenter, uh, Dr. Laura Burgess, is here with us today. So welcome, Dr. Laura. Thank you so much um, for giving us your time. Um, we'll be together for the next you know, 40 minutes to, to an hour. Um, to talk about the Culture Transformation Accredited Professional. Um, it's, it's a wonderful program um, brought forth by the Human Value Center in coordination with the Barrett Value Center and ProSocial. Uh, Dr. Laura will tell you more about that. Uh, just to give you a short introduction into who she is, um, really summarizing here, uh, but she is the president of the Human Value Center. It's a tech-based education and training center focused on optimizing human potential. Um, Dr. Laura has a passion for cultivating human or indeed humane approaches to leadership development and community evolution. Um, right now, she's focusing on how best technology can support the interpersonal landscape development and the raising of our consciousness. The well-being economy and the role of the inner economy are at the forefront of her current interests and contributions. As I mentioned, she's here to talk to us today about the Culture Transformation Accredited Professional uh, Program. And I think I will leave, um, hand over to you, Dr. Laura, to lead us in and tell us more about, about all of this. So thank you so much again, and welcome to everyone that's here. Well, thank you so much, Raji, for, for having us. I have been so much looking forward to um, this day. Um, Jim and I uh, began this conversation well over a year ago, um, and so it's a delight for me to be with you today, uh, Ubiquity University, in um, offering a new credential that we believe can truly transform our culture. And that's really important in today's conversation, because when we think about whatever intractable differences or problems that we are, are facing, if we don't have a um, nourished uh, culture, that, that space where we can grow in our trust in one another, then nothing will move forward in raising consciousness or evolving as humanity. So what is CTAP? Um, we are calling all change agents because we see real demand in the community, and we know that from firsthand experience. Um, CTAP is a credential that was created, co-created between the Human Value Center. And to tell you a little bit about us, uh, we are a collective of scholars, practitioners, uh, social workers, positive psychologists, uh, neuroscientists, um, technology and gamification um, experts, um, people who really are very, very um, engaged with technology, but want to use it for uh, prosperity of humanity and in a and in a way that um, cultivates the best of our humanity. Um, the Barrett Value Center, um, some in this community may already be familiar with Barrett because Richard Barrett's work has been around for several decades now. The Barrett uh, Value Center, we find, offers an incredible tool to assess the culture in organizations. And when you're starting dialogues, um, 
in any organization or any group, we, we always find that it begins with our values when you seek out common ground. Um, the Barrett Value Center is um, used all over the world. Um, we have used it at the Human Value Center um, in a number of organizations, even citywide and statewide programs. And I'll talk to you a little bit about some examples in a moment. But we felt that if you're going to earn the pinnacle culture transformation credential, because right now, you know, it's kind of crazy out there. Anyone can be a coach. Uh, culture means different things to different people. Um, there's there's misunderstanding on how you can actually measure impact. So we brought our people from the Human Value Center together with Barrett folks, um, as well as pro-social folks. And um, let me tell you a little bit about pro-social colleagues. Uh, the pro-social world is really a nonprofit think tank um, based on human evolutionary theory. Um, uh, Dr. Ostrom's work earned uh, a, a Nobel Prize in economics, actually, uh, regarding uh, the way in which humanity either survives or, or, or doesn't. And, and so there's this is really the theoretical framework that guides our work in CTAP, but it also provides a number of very tangible tools on cooperation and collaboration. So we came together, these three groups, with a white canvas and said, if we were going to create the pinnacle degree, the degree, not the degree, the, the credential, sorry, I was an academic for 25 years. Um, the, the credential that is going to say, these are people um, who are competent and confident to be able to run a culture transformation program in their community. Um, so much so that we would, hand them our toolbox and say, here are all of our analytical tools, here are all of our software programs on uh, app-based programs, because we know that you can be a leader. We need to multiply the effect of people who have these skills and these tool sets. So people who go through this program, and this program is um, run asynchronistically, hybridly uh, with um, online Zoom, uh, in our uh, Slack hub and using the app itself. It's important for people learning about CTAP to actually experience the tools in their own learning environment. So number one, someone who goes through CTAP is gonna go and do a deep dive themselves. They are going to um, really understand a little bit more about self. There's gonna be exploration about how one engages in the world uh, with others and contribution, life purpose and meaning and so forth. Um, as you can see here, I won't read through this, but um, of course, part of our rubric is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. At the, at the crux of all of this, um, people need to understand that they matter, um, that they have the ability to contribute. And so we go through a real deep dive of personal development before learning how to develop others and then how to scale citywide programs. So when you go through CTAP, you will come out with the certification of being able to run Barrett Values uh, Center analytics and tools, and I'll show you what those look like. You will understand some basic um, exercises and frameworks from pro-social world. Um, and, and this is really a big deal. The Templeton Foundation believes so strongly in pro-social world that um, they're investing in the study of the impact of CTAP, which is pretty exciting. Um, Human Value Center is going to promote all of our tools, our tools that engage city and community, our schools programs, our university programs, our corporate programs, all of those tools are more or less in a box for those who complete CTAP, whether they're running a personal coaching business, whether they're in the HR uh, department and need new ways to engage in this post-COVID world. Uh, we'll also go through a deep dive with the Enneagram for yourselves, as well as how you can use it with your teams and groups. And then, as I mentioned, uh, in perpetuity, have the licensing for our software. Um, so what is the, that software? and those programs. I'm gonna show you how they're put into use because I think if you can visualize uh, an example of how you would use this either with a client or in your organization, that would make a lot of sense. Um, okay, so I mentioned the demand. Let me speak to that for a moment. Uh, the Human Value Center began as a, a boutique uh, consulting uh, cooperative and 
business just kind of exploded. Why did business explode to the to the point that we said we need these train the trainer types of tools? There are compassionate cities, smart cities, green cities, um, environmental crisis cities. There are all kinds of uh, coalitions forming around particular values or, or behaviors or crises, um, and they need tools. They need scaffolding, um, and we can't do it all. So that's why we're inviting you to um, learn what we've done uh, as a group and, um, and bring this work forward. So just a little bit about us. Um, Raji has told you a little bit about the kind of group we are and what we do. Um, the kind of group we are, uh, we felt was a very perfect alignment uh, with Ubiquity University and uh, the values that Ubiquity brings and, and why this uh, collaborative um, credential is so exciting. We started uh, running this kind of program ourselves uh, in a variety of settings, university settings, uh, citywide, statewide settings, uh, working with multi-sectors. That is, we bring, this is a toolbox that will bring, um, in a case of a city, healthcare, education, government, nonprofits, faith-based organizations, residents together in one setting to address common values, um, common concerns and, and collective contribution to problem solving. Um, so again, this could be 15 people or it could be 150,000 people. We've worked with as much as 250,000 people. Um, it's exciting to break down the silos and bring people together in these settings. And you know, there's a real yearning, a real hunger for that kind of connection. Um, part of that is probably the post-COVID world, um, but part of that is also technology. So how do we use technology in meaningful ways where we can build um, from transactional to relational? Why are the values assessments important? And why would you wanna be able to have the credential that allows you to run this um, with all of your uh, organizations or departments? Um, this helps you do an internal examination of where people are. We begin with asking people their personal values, and then we ask them what they feel their organization's values are, and then what they desire the future um, of the organization, what the aspirant values would be. This is really, really insightful. It, it gives um, leadership a chance to um, challenge assumptions. It gives leadership an opportunity um, to illuminate per perhaps some blind spots. And, and most importantly though, it does identify where we have shared and common values. My alignment between my personal values and where I work or my values and where I live, my values uh, and, and my city, those types of things or where we collectively would like to go. So it really starts shaping that roadmap it's a place for people to begin. So when we have people ask us, how can I start a compassionate city? How can we create a well-being economy in our community? Let's start with values. Let's, let's start a dialogue. This is how you start those dialogues. Um, I'm gonna give you an example here of, oops. Um, you, you receive a lot of rich data as a result of these uh, surveys. In this case, we were working with a police department, um, again, showing the personal values, what connected, they, they had accountability between personal values, the values of the police department, accountability was there, desired, accountability was there. So that really underscores where they have strong alignment, they're on track with that particular value. But then we see some blind spots here about bureaucracy and um, short-term focus versus long-term and a short-term uh, challenges with control. So this helps you really identify where the problems are. Uh, it's just an incredible tool and you get a depth of reports that can be shared and understood from a psychological development standpoint. You understand where people are coming from. Um, again, really important in understanding where your foundation is in building a culture. Dr. Laura, if I can in interrupt for one second, if you could please hit slideshow on your thing, it will make uh, the slides bigger and we'll see them a lot better. I'm so sorry. Um, okay. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. So maybe we can go back a couple just to take a look at those graphics a little bit. Yes. Okay. So here is an example. Can you see that better, Raji? Much, much better now. Thank you. Okay. So these kinds of reports can be also sliced and diced by demographics. So let's say 
well, I'm a, I'm a city of 150,000 people. These are the vet, these are the overall in the aggregate of my city or community or office. Um, fill in the blank. Um, but if I I wanted to say, well, let's just look at the values of men compared to women and how they're experiencing this, or how about the people in this zip code. Uh, or that zip code, or, um, you know, people over 50, or, you know, again, in a university setting, well, is this the same experience in the College of Engineering as it is in the, in the College of Nursing? Um, is it the same experience for the undergraduates as the graduates? So you can see how valuable that kind of um, analy rich data that you can receive from this um, can be. And again, it also gives you an opportunity to say, where should we focus our energies on um, improvements? And so here it was confusion, bureaucracy, and silo mentality. Um, I mentioned the psychological uh, framework as well. So Richard Barrett used, um, you know, you can see sort of the Maslow's hierarchy of knee embedded in here, um, but it, it also helps you understand the headspace, uh, the mindset of where people are coming from. And I will tell you, in using this compared, uh, combined with our app, uh, mental health and well-being is really uh, the second pandemic uh, that we're experiencing. So that's a really important piece to well-being economy is the inner economy and working with people uh, in their own personal well-being uh, as we expect people to um, come out and be more cooperative and more collaborative. So then we move into um, app-based engagement, and that's when we have uh, the incredible opportunity to connect with everyone in the community it can be by teams, it can be uh, the community as a whole. And every day we're kind of dripping in little tiny micro lessons. It might be a short video clip. It might be a reflection. Um, it, it, there's a social board so people are able to um, support one another. I'll show you what that looks like. But basically everything going on in the app, um, it's more than an app because it's really a curated learning platform. So for example, uh, when you complete CTAP, you will have this at your disposal to say, gee, my client or my uh, company really wants to work on um, building empathy in the organization. Everything is based on challenges because we make it fun. So you would be able to provide um, your group uh, a, an, a challenge, a fun challenge to be able to say, let's work on empathy for 30 days. Every single day, there would be a little bit of a prompt um, that is going to engage you in thinking about what empathy means to you, how you experienced it in the world that day, what that looked like. We know how important reflection is. Journaling earns points because gamification uh, and the, uh, the psychology behind that kind of keeps people coming back. Um, we teach a few meditative practices, breath-based exercises, um, just to help ground people. Again, very holistic in design. And I've mentioned the DEI rubric as all of uh, the importance of this. Why is this important to shifting culture? Um, it is engaging in storytelling and story listening. I am not going to get along with you unless I feel you have heard my story. And I am not going to understand you unless I take the time and I hone my listening skills and, and really embrace hearing your story. The app allows that to happen in a, um, it makes a large city feel very small. It makes people feel like they actually do matter. Um, that, that connection creates a safe environment to talk about potentially more um, challenging and polarized issues. Uh, and again, you can then blend that with Zoom and, and things like that. So it's really a great way to um, integrate technology or address problems. Again, based on positive psychology, um, gamification and measurement. And measurement is a key piece here. So I mentioned the Barrett uh, measurements, but we're also able to measure the way in which people engage and the way in which the needle is moving in terms of their inner landscape. Uh, again, custom design to whatever it is we want to measure. Is it stress? Is it anxiety? Uh, we did a project in Mexico uh, last year. There was actually a policy passed um, in Monterey uh, and for the state of Nuevo Leon to for organizations, NON, NOM 035 was the legislation number, and it was to address mental health, well-being, uh, sleep, and um, in stress. And so we ran a program and we were able to actually measure 
people's ability to decrease their anxiety and stress, increase um, their well being um, through this process. And so 27,000 people were able to participate at a very low cost because it's you know, based on a, a very scalable, accessible model. If you're able to see this here, uh, this actually shows you what the platform looks like. There is a daily inspiration. So every morning uh, your phone goes off and it's personalized. So it will say, hey, Raji, let's start your day off right. Did you know that your brain can only be in a state of positive uh, or negative? So let's start it off right. And you'll get a beautiful quote or, or image uh, relating to the theme. So going back to the empathy theme, there might be an incredible um, inspirational landscape with a beautiful quote related to empathy. And they're going to click on it and get 10 points. The gamification goes to the challenge um, because we want people to have uh, that, that desire to come back, that dopamine, um, because we want you to engage with others. Um, there's a daily intention. Oops. Daily intention is also customized. So it might be just to, it might be the mantra of the group. It might be um, something related to the challenge, but it's anything that you design. And again, you get more points. And, and that's something every day you just want to click on it. It only takes a few seconds, but it's, it's starting that uh, mental shift. The daily journal, um, we know how important journaling is and reflection for actually raising consciousness. So people actually write in a totally confidential journal that becomes their private uh, journal at the end, which they are able to keep. They get extra points for that because the journaling is so important. There is a, whoops, sensitive buttons. Uh, a wall of gratitude. Um, this is important too, positive affirmations. It's just sort of a personal uh, shout out. You know, I watched today's video. It really got me thinking about this. Uh, I tried to put, apply that in my life and this is what happened. And you have people responding to how you are putting things into motion. And that um, positive affirmation is really good for us as well. We don't get enough of that in our lives. Um, the mindset practice box here, this is where we upload um, People in the organization uh, can share their wisdom, or it might be things that are going on that you'd like to share. For us, we also update um, different breath-based ba practices. Uh, hey, are you feeling a little um, nervous today? You have a big presentation. Try this uh, breath-based uh, practice to calm me down. The weekly perspective is oftentimes uh, a TED talk or a custom video related to what it is you're trying to learn and shift in behaviors. And today's positive intention is just a personal um, shout out for oneself. So again, this is research-based. Uh, it is totally tech supported. So if someone who comes out with CTAP says, now I have these kinds of tools at my fingertips, already custom designed, uh, except for plopping on a, a logo of my organization or my client and all of the work is done. I mentioned analytics. Analytics are important as well, as we all know for accountability and tracking. So we manage what we measure. And so when you combine the kind of analytics that we're able to provide through the app uh, and the Barrett uh, assessment tools, you have a complete picture. This is in, uh, in the example for police full-time officers. There's a personal, uh, results, but there's also a collective result. Um, so to give you uh, yet another example, let me see here. I don't know how we are on time. Why don't I stop there and see if we have any questions? Is it just the four of us? <laughs> no, no, we have, uh, we have 16 people in total okay they're just listening intently I think um I had a well not a question as such but you'd mentioned it when we were preparing for the call and I thought it might be nice for others to hear you you mentioned that there's quite a diverse and interesting cohort even this year joining this program and that's one of the interesting things to me as I sort of read the website and things it's it is an opportunity to meet people from all kinds of different areas, isn't it? Um, and I, I think really that makes is. it very interesting. Yeah, it really is. And thanks for bringing that up. So, you know, we knew, we knew there was an emerging um, 
market, if you will, a demand, a hunger for this kind of uh, work, and also to have it all together. You know, it, it took us a couple of years to come to this point to say, you know, uh, we had that blank canvas and said, what are the non-negotiables? What does a person really need to master? Um, and, 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 you know, to really do a, a phenomenal job and feel really good about what they're providing. And so um, it's taken some time to, to build this recipe. And as we have found the, the spaces that are desiring this, that really need the tool set, you know, well-being economy is, uh, is, an, is a burgeoning space. Um, and it's combinations of people, right? You have government staff working with uh, community organizers, working with nonprofit agencies. And they, they may all be well-intended and they come from a different vantage point, but how do you work together and how do you, how do you create, we're so accustomed to our silos. How do we truly break those down and collaborate? And Pomona is a great example. And if, and if we have time, I'll show a, a, just a clip on Pomona. Um, but we've been working with the city of Pomona for five years now. And, you know, in the, in the first day, just even getting, uh, you know, the, the mindset, the shift of, you know, you want us to sit at what table with who, <laughs> um, you know, and then, you know, in the end, so of course, in the beginning, you have all these faith leaders over here and all the government people over here and begrudgingly the police and other first responders are attending and over here. And, and by the end, here we are today, they have weekly meetings, uh, uh, bringing each other together and updating on what's happening. And there are just incredible, incredible um, examples of flourishment. And again, the important piece here is metrics because we don't get people to buy in to the feel good, but they buy in to prove it, prove it, prove it, prove it. Well, when we started working with compassionate cities, uh, it was assumed that you couldn't prove uh, that a city was becoming compassionate. Well, actually we can. Um, and compassion is hard. Compassion is not easy and it is not fluffy. Um, but for the cities that are tackling this and Pomona is one of them, it's now embraced. And so getting back to demand, the state of California passed legislation uh, one year ago this month um, to be the first compassionate state in, in the union. Um, now, of course, there were no appropriations tied to that. So what does it mean to be a compassionate city? What does it mean to be a compassionate state? So now we are working with, uh, with the state legislature on training programs. We don't have a chief culture officer in the federal government, we don't, in, in, the, in the administration. We don't have a chief culture officer at the state level or at the local level. Um, but we need it to become ubiquitous, right? That we're all even conscious of the fact that we, we are swimming in a culture and what does that culture look like and what is it producing? And I mean, think of our communities as gardens. I mean, how is it toxic? Is it vibrant? Um, what's making it vibrant? What's making it toxic? How do we fix that? How do we create nur uh, a nurturing community? Uh, and it starts with us, you know, we have to be healthy and how do we help others embrace the idea of wanting that in order to get to the kinds of solutions or problem solving? Thanks, Dr. Laura. We have a couple of comments in the chat. I'll just share them with you. Um, I, it may elicit comment. Uh, Maureen says, brilliant program. I know others that might be interested or want to collaborate. So that's, that's nice to hear. And then Dan says that he wants to create and join many communities around the globe and network them together to create a coalition. Um, so that's a really interesting idea as well. And as you can see in the chat, Dr. Laura, we have a few questions. Um, about kind of the structure of the course. How long does it take? When does it begin? How is it structured? So maybe you can speak to some of that. Yes, thank you for um, those questions. Um, so how is the program, how does the program roll out and how is it structured? So of, of course we are reaching out to people who are, and because this is a, a new opportunity, some people are career changers. Um, saying I want something more meaningful in my life, and this is going. This will definitely provide that. Um, and and others are saying I I, I need a tool, um, and, or multiple tools, or I need new training. So September twelfth is when this would launch, um, and that will launch through the app. You'll get a countdown that will um, tell you uh, when you're starting. Um, and then as you can see through this schedule here, there are eight live Zoom sessions. So 
the whole schedule is here. I can um, put the link up on the chat as well. You can see the, the live. Um, the important piece to this training as well is you're going to be able to start implementing a project during the program. You're not just going to learn it all and then good luck. We hope it works out for you. That's our point too, is we want to ensure you're going to be successful. And if you have any um, insecurities or forget something that you have a mentor as you're processing this. So by the time you finish in December, you have you have already implemented a project using an app, designing an app, using a Barrett tool, um, analyzing the results, sharing the results with 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 a with a project. And if you don't have one, we can have you partner with somebody else in the organ in in the cohort who is running a real program. But we want this to to matter. We want it to be real. And as a result, you will have minimally completed one successful project using all the tools with a coach who's going to um, ensure that you understand what you're doing. Is it all online? Uh, when do you begin and how long an investment of time? So in, 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 just to address that again, it's designed for busy people with demanding jobs. So um, if you walk through that schedule, you're, you're putting in 12 weeks worth of work, but it's it's what you put in, you're going to get out. I would say about um, two hours a week um, is realistic. Um, and again, for the duration, but it's hands on the experiential part is where that learning comes in. And it, that's kind of hard to measure in terms of how much time you put into that and how much you, um, what kind of results you're looking for, I should say. Thanks, Dr. Laura. I think those are the questions we have for the time being. Um, Dr. Jim, I see that you've uh, unmuted yourself. Perhaps you have some words. <laughs> thank you, Raji. Uh, and thank you, Laura. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure just listening to you over the last uh, few minutes. And what I wanted to say, everyone, is I just wanted to underscore the importance of this course uh, in the following way. You know, we at Ubiquity University really are focused on increasing your interior capacity for psycho-emotional equilibrium and your capacity to do good in the world in a collaborative way. And the partnership that we've been developing with Laura Burgess and her organization, and also the partners that, uh, as you heard, like ProSocial that are coming in to support this program are similarly motivated. You know, we're in a world where everywhere we, we look, there's increasing turbulence, whether it's in the climate, whether it's in politics, whether it's in geostrategic instability, uh, financial markets, et cetera. And as we go into this world of increasing turbulence, we have to do everything that we can to build our interior capacity to maintain our I would say moral equilibrium and our capacity to do good in the world in the face of escalating adversity and chaos. And that's why Ubiquity really wanted to uh, promote this course in the way that, that we are. And if you look on our website, you'll see all kinds of courses uh, that are similarly oriented around increasing our interior fortitude. And so I just wanted to say that, Laura, that, that this, this course and these kinds of courses, you know, five, 10 years ago were interesting. Um, but I would say under current world circumstances, these kinds of courses are essential for maintaining uh, the, the, the uh, regenerative capacities for all of us. And that's why Humanity Rising uh, is uh, supporting this as we begin our broadcasts uh, again next uh, uh, Tuesday and why Ubiquity University is very, very pleased to be uh, in partnership with uh, Laura uh, and her group uh, to convene this course. So I would encourage everyone to uh, make yourself available if at all possible. Thank you so much, Jim. And I just want to share as well, because this is the first cohort, 
Um, and because we really want to have the right people in that first cohort, we do have some scholarships available. So if anyone is interested or in need um, to discuss scholarships, um, please let me know. And did we provide um, HVC? Yeah, okay. We have our website. Well, no, you have a landing page, of course. It's only me. Ubiquity has... Or you can be in touch with me if you want to take the course and you have some kind of financial challenges. Uh, we'll work something out to enable you to do it. That's part of our commitment. Uh, so, uh, yes, the important thing is to take the course and to join the cohort. And, and then maintain that toolbox. I mean, that's that's the important thing, too, is it's not just going to be in your head and on you. You're going to have everything you need. Thanks. Thanks, Jim, for that comment and Dr. Laura. A um, couple of things, actually. Um, one, I think, is, and you've spoken to this already, Dr. Laura, certainly, but one thing that sort of sticks out to me about this program is what you just mentioned, is that we come out not just with some sort of knowledge, but with actual, with an actual toolbox that we can use in a job we're doing in that moment. Am I, am I correct in assuming that that's, that's what I'm gathering? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's a real sense of urgency to what Jim just spoke to. There's a real sense of urgency. And, and so we need to scale this up. We need to ramp up frequency. We need to <laughs> ramp up energy. And, and, and so this requires, uh, in order to have that sea change, we need that critical mass, right? And so once we have a critical mass, then, then we're on our way uh, and, and the rest will happen. So for, for those who feel that calling, um, I mentioned the right people because this is going to play out in so many different sectors in, in emerging sectors, uh, in forgotten sectors, um, uh, in forgotten ways of being. Um, so we're going to both resurrect uh, the wisdom of our, our ancestors as well as new ways of being uh, humans who work in a technology world. Uh, it's not going to go backwards in that regard. So how, how do we bring technology um, into our lives in a positive and productive way? And that's the other piece to this. You know, social media we know has done so much damage. Uh, uh, you know, while it's done a lot of good in bringing the worlds together, we know about all the psychological damage that social media has caused. Uh, for a variety of people. This is a way um, of how to engage um, in, in, in ways that are fruitful and meaningful. Uh, and and it, it creates a new ethos of how one engages in social media, uh, which is why it's really great with students. Uh, we start introducing um, apps with, we started working with middle schools a few years ago. Um, and you know we really hope those are planting seeds for the future because it's the it's the slow drip, right? It's it's people telling you every day that you matter and that you're 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 good enough and you're smart enough, and while also planting some growth seeds about how we look at the world and how we engage with others and how we how we might want to grow and and uh, learn and be different, um, and how to be supportive to others and and the the dopamine that we get from doing good and service to others. So um, it's pretty good. Let's see. Wow. I'm not sure, uh, Dan's making a comment, okay. And you can roll, great. Great, thanks Dr. Laura. Those are the questions we have in there. If you have anything else to share with us, uh, I think now would be a, now would be a good time. Um, in closing, if, if this schedule doesn't work for you, um, there, there will be mo more future um, you know, cohorts in, in 2023. Um, to tell you a little bit about what your colleagues' um, profile will look like, we have um, some representatives from the Ecological Civilization Institute. Um, we have uh, with ecociv.org. Um, we have uh, people from Las Vegas who are working on the Compassionate Cities Movement in the city of Las Vegas. Uh, we have folks from um, the Bay Area of California, a city councilwoman is joining the cohort um, as is a chief of staff of a Northern California senator. 
Um, we have someone from a lead, a leader from an interfaith group and uh, a city staffer from another city. So it's, it's kind of an interesting mix. There may be some conscious uh, capitalism folks uh, who want to learn more as well. So join the eclectic mix, bring your talents and gifts and, and your voice, because that's the other piece too, because this is uh, really the founding group, uh, you will have an opportunity to really help shape what that looks like in the future uh, for others. And we want to tell your stories and, and showcase your projects and, and the good work that you're doing. Um, and to so to promote that and, um, and the way in which this can be so impactful. Wonderful. Thank you, Dr. Laura. Um, I will, oh, we have a question there. Can you share the link for the course on Ubiquity University? I've just shared the link above. I'm going to share it again in the chat. So if you hit that landing page, you can enroll in the program through the links um, on that page. Um, if anyone has any further questions, now would be the time. I'll give it a few seconds just to make sure that we've got um, all the questions out of the way for today. If anyone would like to um, participate in just a, a demo of, uh, let's say, a resilience or a perspective app-based week-long challenge, I'm happy to invite you all to a week-long challenge uh, to play to play in our sandbox, so to speak. Just let me know. Excellent. Um, perhaps you can put your email address into the chat as well, uh, Dr. Laura, so that people can contact you if needed. Um, let me post the, this is the link for enrolling in the course and the recording, which a few of you have asked about already, I will make, um, available Georg, I assume that's possible. We'll make that recording available to you about 24 hours after, um, this session is complete. So 24 hours from now. Um, if that's, if that's all we have in terms of questions, I would like to thank everyone um for being here today we really appreciate it we appreciate your ears uh thank you dr laura for sharing this wonderful program with us um i'm actually quite tempted to join myself after having oh. listened to this presentation. <laughs> i think it, it could do a lot of good so thank you so much um and that i suppose is the end of the session for this evening um but do get in touch with either me i put my uh, email address in the chat as well We'll share the recording for you in the next day. Um, and Dr. Laura's also put her email in there in case you'd like to, to query her further. So thank you so much, everyone. I will say good night from Sri Lanka. And if you're in the West, have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.